The other thing that we can say about that routine of read it, write it, spell it, um, and label it as regular, irregular, mm -hmm. that is moving us toward that multimodality ah. instruction. We, we hear the word, we see the word, we say the word, we write the word. Right. That's our newer understanding of powerful instruction that some of our students, especially those with dyslexia, really need that kind of multimodality um, engagement. It doesn't hurt any of our students to do that. It probably facilitates their reading, but some of our students, so all students benefit, some students need it, and that's built right into that routine in the Wonders program. You bring up a good point. A student who has been identified with dyslexia truly can benefit from the science of reading framework, mm -hmm. right? Yes. What is it, what is it about that Scarborough's robe or that framework that helps a dyslexic student what are those pieces i mean obviously you touched on multimodal instruction mm -hmm. but is it that systematic explicit uh understanding of language compre comprehension word recognition that really help with dyslexic students could could you elaborate on that i'm curious uh, yes i'd be happy <laughs> i know as a dyslexia uh, expert uh i've i have studied written about dyslexia i am the parent of a now adult child with dyslexia i've experienced it um, as a teacher as a parent as a researcher as an author what we do know about dyslexia is that you are born with a dyslexic brain um uh there are other word reading difficulties that look a lot like dyslexia. But if we're truly talking about dyslexia, we're talking about a, a neurobiological condition um, that some evidence suggests that it is genetic, that it's inherited from your parents and grandparents. But what we've also learned, and we've learned tremendous amount just even in the last 20 years about what dyslexia really is and what are really the best interventions to address it. What we, an essence, a, a very simple but es essential understanding about dyslexia is we think back about Scarborough's rope or the simple view and those two components. In all dyslexic students have problems with that word recognition or decoding aspect. That's in fact the, the sort of definitional about uh, dyslexia. That's where the problem is. Some, maybe quite a few, it depends on the research that you're looking at, but some of our dyslexic children also have problems with language acquisition and language development. They may have disorders around that, but the essence of their concern is around the word recognition. So we can pay a lot of attention as those of us who care about dyslexia uh, at the bottom of Scarborough's rope where we have to have um, the phoneme awareness, we have to have that the phonics, and we have to work really hard to help them map those sight words. And whereas some of our neurotypical kids just seem to breeze through that, um, many of our students with dyslexia take many, many years to acquire those basic foundational skills. But the good news is that they, most of them can, and especially we're quite sure that That's almost all news, of them right? can, whether yes. or not they have There's dyslexia, so much good news about, about dyslexia. Early. There there really is. We understand so much more about it. We mm. know that we can identify precursors of dyslexia, perhaps as early as three and four years old, and start doing age appropriate interventions to build those neurological um, uh, pathways that their brains don't organically, biologically develop, but they can be developed. And how do we develop them? Through instruction. Yeah. And so that's, that is, again, that is some good news. And sometimes, isn't it maybe that that dyslexic student just needs a little more time, a little more intensity with, like you said, the, the word recognition, the bottom yes. part of yeah. Scarborough's rope? Yes, but we want to be careful. It's not just time alone. Like you need to practice more. So go over in the corner and right. read by yourself for an no. hour. What what they do, the time part would be they benefit tremendously from more instruction. instruction. That is okay. that is age appropriate because we don't teach a three-year-old and a four-year-old the same way we teach a, an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has to be age appropriate and it has to be targeted to the skills that, that they need. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely.